Hi, I am Alexander. Uh, I've been doing films, uh, computer games. Um, I came into Ethereum at some point and tried to fix the UX when nobody heard about ENS, which was very hard. Um, I tried to build stuff on top of Ethereum, artworks. Uh, I tried to avoid crazes. I've at some point tried to be part of like the NFT movement before it was there, and then I started building music for traders during the biggest NFT boom there was, and then when everything crashed, we released. Um, <clears throat> what? Yeah. So I'm, I'm also known as R right now. Um, this talk is part of a song called Capybara. And this is the recipe. This all started at some point in South America. I joined EVE Global uh, as a hacker in Peru. Um, somebody mentioned for me for the first time that something existed called Mud by Lattice. I was into computer games all my life, tried to build games, modded Half-Life, uh, modded Doom, modded Duke Nukem, and then on Ethereum this was, was it, would, it would have been fun to build something on Ethereum, but it's very hard. Uh, Mud kind of opened the door there because it uses ECS, so for the first time we have a system where we can easily store state on chain. Somebody in my team mentioned it, so we kind of got hacking around. We built something that was like not exactly real time, but sort of felt like a real game. You built something, blocks together, try to build like a little city. We didn't really know what to do yet, uh, but everybody thought it looked really cool. So we won a bunch of prizes. And um, that kind of funded me for the next like month, like a thousand euros. I was South America, so uh, well, I traveled to Colombia and I thought like, okay, you know, uh, I can do this. Maybe uh, figure out what to do with it. Um, and normally, like as an indie game dev, you don't have like a thousand euros. You have like half a million for a three-person team. You spend two months figuring out whether your idea is actually good at all. It's like completely bad shit, and you need to kill it. And you do two to six months for a vertical slice, and hopefully within two years you're finished, uh, or you have 12 years of uh, sweat and tears, and then maybe you get lucky. And this is you know, very different from 2K in grants. Then you're building on chain. Like, why are you building on chain? Because you get some affordances, like your whole game logic can be used to determine whether you, whether you get an NFT or not. So it's not like selling, like, I don't know, a loot pack, or you can actually, you know, you can lose something. You can, you can buy a sword, but you can lose it in, in the game because of the rules. And then you build autonomous worlds, which are fucking idiotic. They are multiplayer by default, so you can't test it with like your friend. You need like five to ten players. You have all this bullshit around on-chain economics. We have no idea how this works. And if you have an example of games that do economics, like EVE Online, they, they actually closed down their economics, so they, they gated by having like ASQ, oh, wait, this is very technical. Um, they sell like a player pass to avoid direct influence from, from gold so, uh, sold into the game. So really unexplored territory. So the difficulty level to even start doing all this stuff is bizarre. And then you get VCs and the first thing they ask you is like, why are you building on chain? And then I'm like, yeah, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Like, honestly, I, I think it's fun. Uh, it's interesting. Like, that's, it's like cooking. You know, you don't, you don't know what the final result is unless you have a recipe. Like, I have no idea. But like, it's a bit like this game getting over it. It's really hard. It's so fucking hard, you actually don't want to play it. And it has like 60,000 positive reviews. And if you do like an analysis on the reviews, do we have a metric to figure out how much revenue we think that game made? It is in the end like 11 million. It's kind of funny, like this guy, that, this game nobody wants to play still made, well, think about it. Um, I read this morning, Friend Tech actually only made 30 million. It's not that much. And then Bump.Fun, which is not that fun, 
made 50 million. So, like, I mean, this is, a, this is one guy who, who made this game. Well, he says, like, he made this game to hurt people. <laughs> okay. Well, so why aren't you just cooking? And what, what's the recipe? I, I don't have the recipe, but, like, some people invent their own formula for what it's like to be a Michelin free star. So I feel this to me a bit like you don't know what's going on. You, it's kind of like going to the market in a new country. You, you look around the shops, maybe there's a fruit you never tasted. Maybe, you know, like they have like 20 different potatoes in Peru. And then you shop around. Block time delay. So b building something on chain means you're waiting on if you're in minute, 15 seconds. On, on layer two, you wait two seconds. And when you get really lucky, you burn, build an Arbitrum orbit, you get 250 milliseconds, but that you press a button, and you still have to wait. So we get, we, you gotta figure out how to compensate for that. Not having players, kind of a problem. Because like I said, it's multiplayer. You can't test your game. You need to pay people, but then all these people are just here to get paid, which is, okay, well, fuck it, also. And then we wanted to figure out how to do this. So we built something. And then there's a video. So all, all of this is actually in the transactions. And we have 250 millisecond delay, so we bridge the gap, but just having a particle effect makes it feel like it's still happening in real time. Then, some stuff doesn't actually need to be on chain. Like, for example, the other players talking to you, um, it's real time communication, but it doesn't have to be on chain. We don't want people in crypto to, to go to come in and go like when token, so we didn't want to do a chat. We do like this bubble that's kind of borrowed from the video game journey or like stolen. Uh, so pe people know the presence of the other players um, and they build stuff together. So this is the first tryout. This is where we are uh, right now. these plants grow, this is what we're trying to figure out right now, how, how to do a game loop on chain. So at some point the jungle will grow, it will grow over the houses. We're trying to build an autonomous world. I mean, there's a lot of theory about it. We don't know what game will be an autonomous world, but it, I think it would be nice if it's alive, if there's plants growing, animals. There's really like, they talk about digital physics, but uh, what, what would, it, would it look like? And then also, like, uh, somehow we have to make money or we can create maybe different affordances in crypto, which, like, I think ideas around hyperstructures are really interesting. So we were like, okay, maybe we can, we also have, like, a, we can have, like, maybe 100 players right now. But pretty big problem. Maybe people can watch the game and pay for something to happen in the game so they don't do, like, 100 actions per minute, just, like, they, they influence the world. So we're trying this out by making people, giving people the capability to make stuff grow. And this could later be like a SimCity disaster and like a volcano or whatever. But we, we wanted to set this up to make it make sense. You make the plants grow, but maybe you do something in real life as well. So you just connect in the game, you actually pay. And it goes straight to this organization that I know from being in Colombia, uh, Sacred Mangrove, Mangla Sagrado. And they reforest there. So they have like a safe wallet now and all the donations go straight to them. They're really cool. They've been, so they, they, they see the effects of tourism there. So we, like I'm playing with this idea of virtual tourism. Well, so this is what we do. So it, w it would change stuff in the world. So that's like a spectator mode idea we're playing with because I'm trying to avoid sort of, well, I'm not getting into it. But design is a bit like a dance. You, like, I don't know what the best idea is, um, but I also don't think it's copying Minecraft. Minecraft is uh, designed around different constraints. 
So you have to play a little bit to create something nice. And you can prepare, but it's like dancing. You have to feel it out. You have to you know, dance with your partner. Um, and like I said, I, I'm trying to avoid some things that might push me in a very like obvious direction. So the holy mountain, what is the holy mountain? Well, probably not NFTs or another casino. I think people play games because they give a shit. Um, so what is the real game? What is really important to people? And Albert motherfucking Einstein said play is the highest form of research. I only use this quote because nobody else knows all the, the other cool thinkers in like gaming and loot and, uh, ludology. Um, we have a genuine desire to engage with stuff. We really want to, you know, to, to figure out how things work. We don't need to get paid. It's just like a nice added bonus. And we, we actually want to suspend ourselves in a story to experience what happens. We watch movies, not because we go into the cinema and we come out with five more euros. No, we actually pay for stuff. Because it's cool. You actually want to see a good movie. And we are naturally fascinated by how things work. So we, we want to understand how other people experience things. We, we really... So we can create a lot of value that we're not doing right now. And we have like this really cool layer of crypto that we can build upon. And there's something weird about playing a game that you don't see very often is that you can actually choose to lose. Like if I play tennis with like my girlfriend, sadly she's not here, but um, you know, I, if I get better at the game, I can choose to like suck at it. You know, I could go like, no, it, it, like, I can pretend I'm not that good. Because I, maybe I just really want to play with her. So there, there is something really interesting about games and something really interesting about the value we create. So I have this really weird hypothesis that I think everybody would probably disagree with, but for me, this is really important. Ownership is fucking boring. I don't want to have a car, like an infinite car or like a forever character. I want to be able to lose. I, I want to lose stuff because that gives it value. Or somebody else can lose something. And I think that people actually play for a really good reason. I don't know what that reason is. I think it's very individual. Um, but they, they have a reason. And it's probably not money. And also, mo money is not what people see as value. And I think we... Now that we have a little bit more tooling, like mud, we have people thinking about this. We are going to explore like this whole area of crypto that is not about immediately about money, but it is about how, how do we actually create value for people. And that could be like uh, pe people playing a game to donate, but also just having fun with friends. I think we can do that. And I don't know why on chain, but it, it offers you a lot of new, you know, new ideas that don't exist. And you see the game industry is, is really looking for ideas. Games are our agency. So they allow us to, to go into a different world, experience something else. They allow us to be like a different person. They allow us to, to figure things out that we can't do in the real world. And the real world is really fucked because you have to pretend you love your job. And actually when you win at a game, it's not fake. Uh, playing is real. Like I still won, I've still won the game. So there's a really interesting overlap between these areas of like the virtual and the real world. I think the most important part, or like, I know one of my teammates uh, has a partner that she found in a game, and I know this story is super common. Like, people can fall in love with each other while playing together. So it, I have four minutes left and I have nothing to say, so you, you can think about all this stuff. And then my, my perfect last slide is like, I want to turn excrement into gold, or like, that's what Alejandro Khodorovsky would do. So, yeah, that's it. I'm really happy to answer questions.